Hey, student animators. Some of you had asked me in class the other day, uh, when you're working in Toon Boom, can you put the 3D objects in there? And absolutely, uh, we covered that in one of the classes earlier this semester. Um, you can bring in uh, 3D models that you've made in either Maya or Blender or another program like Cinema 4D. Um, but besides having static models like uh, you know a house or a car or plants or lamps or furniture, um, you can actually make a little person. Now, normally in Maya, you would you would uh, Model out your person, and then you you know you'd put your your bones and your rigging in, and and, and skin it together, adhere it the um, mesh to the rigging. But what you can try to do is um, just take a sim simple little um, uh, primitive polygon shapes here, and just use a lattice you know deformer to put on there. And what I did is I basically broke the character down into sections, just like we would if we were doing a two D cutout air character um, to put into Tomb Boom. Then after all that's done, I grab the head and each individual part, and I went up under File, and I exported each body part separately as its own selection, and I did that um, as an FBX export, in, all into one folder. And once all that was done, of course you you know you would save your file. Um, all the body parts are exported as FBX. Uh, then I brought it into uh, Toon Boom into Harmony. So I went up under File and I said Import. 3D models, for instance, the head, um, create a layer based on the head name, uh, and convert it. Make sure you check the convert to OSB format. And that brought in every single body part um, as its own layer. Now, if I open up things here, I already have it all put together. For instance, if I open up um, the torso layer here, here's the actual torso uh, 3D mesh that I brought in. Um, so I brought in all the parts, lined them up, and then I gave every single part its own peg, just like I would bringing in the artwork for a character. So for instance, under the, um, the right bicep, I see here's my right bicep um, 3D mesh piece, here's its forearm, and here's the hand, and then I have uh, pegs for all those. Um, so bring in all the body parts, line them up how you want them, then give each one of them a peg. And then the next thing you want to do is, um, once uh, all of them have their own pegs, is to make sure that all the pegs have uh, the um, pivot point, right, uh, where you want the joint to rotate, so the center of rotation for the different body parts. And on top of that, you then want to follow with um, a parent-child hierarchy, just like you would, again, it's the same procedure um, that we go over with the 2D cutout characters. Um, and so I have the uh, hand peg um, is childed to the forearm peg, which then goes to the bicep peg. And what that allows me to do then is just grab the bicep peg and then I can rotate that. Now, it's not gonna work um, as far as, uh, you wanna make sure that you double click on the pegs and turn um, enable the 3D on that. Uh, so for all your layers, all your pegs, enable the 3D. The object comes in as 3D. Um, and then uh, we can close everything up. So uh, everything is inside a peg, every body part's inside a peg. We've made sure that the rotation, the pivot points are where we want them to be, and the inside where they're anchored for the different body joints, how we want them to turn when we manipulate them. And then I've you know, done the parent-child hierarchy. Uh, the next thing we want to do is I put the whole thing underneath one master peg, master dude peg. Um, that way I could move him around. Now, I animated his walk in place and it's 24 frames per second. So I did one step for 24 frames, right? Um, and I just did one step, and then I did the second step. So 48 frames for a complete one, two step. And then you actually go back and take your second frame of everything and then paste it um, starting in frame 49. Don't always go back to the first frame because you're gonna get a stutter, it'll repeat. So I had all that going, so if I just played that by itself, he starts to walk, and that looks great. He's got a little head secondary motion and stuff going on. So it's a very, very, very uh, remedial walk sequence. But it's a nice experiment for you to try. And then what you can do is bring in a camera. So I brought a camera in, gave the camera its own peg. And if I go over here and I, you can see how the camera's gonna work, I'll flip this open, here's the top view. Um, if, as I scrub through the timeline, if you watch over here uh, with the camera peg highlighted, um, I actually just animate, he's animated in place walking, but I have the camera animated to move around him so it actually looks like you know he's walking across you know 
and covering a great distance. Now, if I had um, scenery in here, I could put in you know some some 2D trees and sky and, and animals. Um, that actually, I would then probably take the master peg with him in it, and I once he was walking in place, I would move the master peg throughout the scene with the camera following. Um, but let's move this back over here for a second, and I'll bring this down a little bit, and you can actually see. Um, and go up here and deselect all. <clears throat> I'll play this through and you can actually see, you can do the 3D body inside of uh, Tomb Boom. And it's kind of fun and it's um, not something you'd want to do all the time, but but it's sort of, it would be a fun exercise. You know, build your little polygon figure inside Maya or Blender or Cinema 4D. Um, and then bring it into Tomb Boom, put all the parts inside pegs, put all, you know, center up your pivot your anchor joints, um, and then uh, parent-child hierarchy them, put them inside a master, and have some fun. Just animate him, and you'll bring a little 3D full-figured character right into your 2D world. Have fun, you guys.